Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Nice kite. Thanks. One thing I've always wondered, how do kites fly? Well, they fly using the exact same forces that planes use. Planes? Kites don't look anything like planes. Well, looks can be deceiving. Here, let me show you. Remember that according to Sir Isaac Newton's Hello. third law of motion, forces always work in pairs. And there are two pairs of forces that act on planes. The first pair of forces is thrust and drag. Thrust is the forward motion of the plane, usually created by an engine. Drag is the opposing force created by air pushing against the plane. The other pair of forces is lift and gravity. Lift is the upward force created by air moving over the wing. The shape of the wing creates higher air pressure under the wing which pushes the plane up. Gravity is the downward pull created by the attraction of the earth. And those four forces work together to make a plane fly. Those same forces are used to make a kite fly. In the case of a kite, drag is created by the wind pushing against the surface of the kite, attempting to force it backwards. Thrust is created by the string. Even though you may not always be pulling the kite forward, you're still pulling on the kite to keep it from flying away. And that is a forward force, thrust. Lift is created by the tilt of the kite when you fly it. As the wind blows against the kite, it pushes against the kite, making it go up. And as with all objects, gravity is pulling down on the kite. So you see the same four forces, thrust, drag, lift, and gravity make both planes and kites fly. I think I see. How about I show you all how to make your own kites so that you can run your own experiments? Yeah. But wait, should we get your kite out of the tree first? Yeah, I suppose so. Let's get building. Remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're going to make mini kites. For this, you'll need paper, ruler, scissors, straw, pulpit, masking tape, pencil, crepe paper, and some string. First, hamburger fold the paper in half. Make a mark on top of the paper one inch from the fold. Make a mark on the bottom of the paper one inch from the open side. Draw a line that connects the two points and fold the paper along the line on both sides. Then tape the center seam closed. Tape the straw across the kite near the top using at least five pieces of tape. Make a dot on the keel about two and three quarters inches from the top of the kite and about half an inch from the edge. Place a piece of tape over the dot and then punch a hole where the dot is. Thread the end of the string through the hole and tie a knot. Finally, tape a three and a half foot crepe paper tail to the bottom of the kite. To launch and fly your kite, hold it up high and start to run a little, letting the string out as you go. Once the wind catches it, you can stand still and just work on keeping the string tight. For our kite, a very important part is the tail. The tail provides extra weight to one end of the kite to help it maintain its correct angle into the wind. Kites need to maintain a certain angle into the wind in order to keep lift. If your kite tilts too far over, your tail may be too light, so maybe make one a little longer. If it doesn't tilt far enough into the wind, the tail may be too heavy, so make the tail shorter. But the most important thing about kite flying is safety. So never, ever fly your kite near power lines. And if you can, avoid the trees. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.